Gran Turismo 6 for PlayStation 3 in 2020. Even with the soon-to-be-launched GT7, is it still worth playing? And what is it like to play this classic on a G27 steering wheel? That we're gonna find out in this video. Today we will cover some interesting aspects that have really evolved over the years, such as the franchise, like the graphics and sounds, the gameplay on a wheel, and the game content. One thing I can already say to you is that the graphics in this game are not exactly as the thumbnail or the game's opening sequence shows. I can say that they're a little, maybe a lot less defined. The promotional images of Gran Turismo and the segment that is shown when you launch the game were made perhaps with the same graphics engine used by the game, but not on the same hardware, let's talk about that later. For now, let's focus on what really matters, the gameplay. As is common in the gaming world, and in Gran Turismo it is no different, we have a career mode, an online mode, and other smaller activities that actually make a difference. I've been playing it for the past few weeks and I've managed to advance a lot in my career and have enjoyed some of the extra activities that are phenomenal. So, how about we start talking about the career mode? What we want to discuss here is no small matter. You start the game by doing very, very slow races. It is a miserable start for those who are already used to racing games, especially Forza Horizon using a controller. I say controller because if you're starting to play on a wheel now, there's no more perfect game for that than Gran Turismo. That's because it has a host of activities that teach you and make you practice the fundamental techniques of car control. These activities are the races themselves in career mode, the tests you need to take to earn increasingly higher pilot qualifications, and the miscellaneous coffee break events, Goodwood and Ayrton Senna challenge, just to name a few. Therefore, the licensed tests by which we evolve in the game teach you several techniques from braking and turning to overtaking. On top of that, the physics simulation of the cars is very good and I would say comparable to the current games in the Forza franchise, since I don't have Gran Turismo Sport. This all means that when it comes to simulating the behavior of the car, it is still a great game by current standards, when it comes to a steering wheel like the G27. But in a controller, I feel that it is horrible to drive the car and in the Farsa franchise it is 10 times better at this in my opinion. Still, I think it's worth it for the drivability aspect, but in terms of graphics, well, the story is a little different. At that time, it was common for developers to use rendering farms to extract the highest resolution and quality possible from an environment used in the game. The difference from this to the game that runs on your console is that Gran Turismo needs to run on PS3's internal components in order to keep the frame rate at a reasonable value, so it cannot have incredible resolution and graphics. When producing the game's videos and photos, they have plenty of time to process all the small details of the number of pixels and also the textures, models, lighting, effects and anti-aliasing that culminate into the beautiful publicity images. This has always happened in the history of Gran Turismo. Since the first titles in the series on PlayStation 1, it was common to see videos with incredible graphics, which really had nothing to do with the game besides the models and objects in the scenes. But that's not a bad thing, because it ends up inspiring you about the possibilities that exist both in the game and in other areas of game and car culture. That said, if you can ignore the graphics and sounds, it's a nice game to play. I say sounds, because they are, well, say, different. The different camera positions generate different sounds for the user, but some are better than others, even though none have incredible quality. For example, from inside the car, it sounds like you're inside a big tank or a pot. Take a listen. From outside the car, the sound is a little more pleasant and you can choose between the sounds of the hood or rear camera. So, in terms of sound and graphics, it scrapes a little, but I'll give it a discount for being an older game. Heading now towards the details that make the game enjoyable to fully master. The game has a career mode that increases its difficulty throughout the driver license levels. In it, the behavior of the opponents is quite linear and predictable, nothing in the aggressive ballpark of Forza nowadays that smashes into your car in every opportunity. 
Also, in the career mode divisions, we have coffee breaks and other activities that put you on a training ground with cones or even in a drift car coming straight from Japan. This makes the game very dynamic, considering the career is quite linear. We also have extra activities that put you in the boots of Ayrton Senna and his racing cars, lunar exploration, Goodwood and even a rally longer than Nürburgring itself, with cars of enough variety to make you experience the best of the game. Finally, we can mention that there is an online mode in the game, even though it is kinda abandoned nowadays. Still, back in the day it was common to see drift lobbies, various car racing ones and even endurance racing. With all this variety, we cannot say that the game is lacking options, as even having kart racing, it is a champion in terms of diversity. Finally, if you're wondering if this game has the car you want, well, it probably has, with all these brands to choose from in the dealership's menu. There's only one detail, many cars are repeated and others are models from previous games. Still, it has a good range of cars, including even concept cars. And what about the tracks, you may ask? Well, in addition to the classic tracks always present in Gran Turismo, like Trail Mountain and High Speed Ring, we have famous tracks like Nordschleife and Monaco, which we don't have in Forza 7, for example. And yes, we have tracks that are Japanese streets at night for lovers of one at midnight. If you are worried about not being able to modify your cars, you can sigh relieved since the game has a tuning section, both in performance and aesthetics, even if these are not as abundant as in Forza. For racing, it's a very good system. Conclusion? Is it worth playing Gran Turismo 6 on PS3 in 2020? Considering the immense variety of activities and possibilities, the incredible gameplay behind the wheel and with the only drawback being the visual and the sound part, I would certainly say that it is so worth playing this game before the future release of Gran Turismo 7. Did you like this video? Then please consider subscribing by clicking the circle. Do you want to know how to build your own cockpit for a sim rig for free like mine? Then watch this video. Thank you so much for watching.